the generic production function with which we've been using <clears throat> ever since we st started talking about the theory of the firm is Q equals F of water and fertilizer where Q was corn. <clears throat> I said the reason to do that is because we wanted to think of a production function as being a concrete simple process not anything abstract. The textbook and essentially all other textbooks in intermediate microeconomics instead uses their genetic generic production function Q equals F <coughs> excuse me of L and K where L is labor and K is capital. And now it's time for me to talk in more detail about why I don't think it's a good idea to express production in that kind of way. What I want to focus on is what is meant by the word capital. Now it's easy to imagine that what's meant here is financial capital because financial capital is really important in the real world. The business, the ability of businesses to get loans to for example finance inventory or to finance expansion or takeovers. The capital markets by which we mean the financial markets are a very important part of a modern economy. But financial capital is not what we mean when we talk about capital in the context of production theory. <coughs> because financial capital isn't something that an engineer can use to grow corn. We are here talking about concrete a concrete physical engineering recipe just something like water and fertilizer to make corn we're not talking about something as abstract as credit or money or loans or bonds or stocks or anything like that now <clears throat> clearly the capital market the financial capital market is extremely important so let me describe why that's not what we're talking about. The reason why people loan money to other people is because they can get paid back with interest or they hope to be paid back with interest. So you loan money to someone at one point in time and you hope to be paid back at another point in time. The borrower uh, wants money now and agrees to pay more money back later. So there's a difference in time. We here are talk, have been talking about production processes where we haven't been mentioning time. Everything occurs in one instant. And if everything occurs in one instant, then there's no borrowing and no lending. There are no financial instruments because uh, time is not involved. That's a limitation of our models. And there are economic models that bring time into play. Sometimes they're as simple as having, for the, in theory, the consumer having consumption in time period t and consumption in time period t plus one and some kind of indifference curves and so forth. So there are economic models like that and there are whole fields called dynamic economics which deals with the economics of time. In fact in in my research I often work in that field. But for our purposes here we don't have a flow of time and therefore we don't have borrowing and lending and therefore we don't have financial capital. Furthermore, if one does have financial capital, it's you can't simply put it into a production function. A production function is supposed to be engineering recipes and capital and credit and finance has nothing to do with an engineering recipe. So the correct way of incorporating those important things to real world firms is not just sticking them into the production function. Uh, at least, I mean, if you did that, the sort of principles we use about things like diminishing returns, it's, it's not at all clear that anything like that holds because you're not talking about a physical commodity anymore. Now, there's another issue of the word capital, which is why I wrote on the left-hand part of the screen the excerpt from your textbook. So this is a problem, problem 5.6 from Nicholson's ninth edition. It says power, 
Power Goat Lawn Company uses two sizes of mowers to cut lawns. The smaller mowers have a 24-inch blade and are used on lawns with many trees and obstacles. The larger mowers are exactly twice as big as the smaller mowers and are used on open lawns where maneuverability is not so difficult. The two production functions available to Power Goat are, and then it's listed here, the large mowers have 8,000 square feet of output per hour with uh, uh, two 24-inch mowers as the capital input and one unit of labor input and the smaller mowers use one unit of labor, one unit of capital, and 5,000, and produce 5,000 square feet. Now, the, and then Nicholson goes to ask some questions about this, and I'm interested in the questions that, Nicholas, uh, that Nicholson asks. Instead, what I'm interested in here is just the idea that he's working really hard to get this in the form Q equals F of K and L. So even though there are two different kinds of mowers, which we think of as capital goods, they're machines, he's modeling this here as one kind. And indeed, if you're going to write the production function as Q equals F of K and L, it's, it's very clear that there are lots of different types of capital goods, of machines, or things like machines, uh, or well, not all capital goods are machines. Uh, the uh, parking lot by a restaurant is not a machine, but it still functions as a capital good. Uh, produced means of production. So there are lots of different kinds of capital goods, and if one wants to write a production function simply as f of, k of l and k, then you need to find some way of combining all those different capital goods into one thing called k. Now the the process of combining a whole bunch of things into one thing is called an economics aggregation. So what we're studying, what we're going to study here is capital aggregation. But the general principle of, ag or the general problem of aggregation isn't isn't confined just to capital. There are, of course, also different types of labor, and so there's labor aggregation. There are even possible issues of aggregation in consumer theory. And what I'm going to do next is talk about aggregation in the context of consumer theory, because you understand consumer, consumer theory better now than you do production th theory. We're just starting to learn about production. And the issues will be highlighted in consumer theory pretty starkly. Then we will come back and see how the lessons from cons consumer theory aggregation can be applied to a discussion of capital aggregation.